Hey guys, thanks for watching and welcome to episode 8 of Raising Junior. So far in the series we have been working on the cabin area, so finally now it's time to move towards the back end of the car. Uh, we will replace the trunk floor as it was uh, completely worn out, and also the rear valence and as well as checking in with the quarter panels. All the parts fit together like a jigsaw puzzle, so it's really important to check the alignment of all the pieces together. So first we will start a shot of how everything was before we started cutting away. Now it's time to repair the floor of the trunk. As you can see here, it's in really bad state. These brackets here are where the bumper goes, so if the car has been in some impact, the brackets will break off the, the floor trunk. As we can see, this one is much worse. So we could repair it in little sections, but I decided to do a quicker job and just replace the whole floor, as there's so many little areas to patch. These are the repair panels ready to go in. So we have the spare wheel well, um, the trunk floor and the new petrol tank. Here's the trunk floor from the bottom side. So the big round part is where the spare wheel goes and there's actually a metal piece that holds the tire in place. And the other cutout is for the fuel tank. So we will try these with the new panel. Here we can see that it's not holding very well. Here we started drilling the spot welds and cutting away sections that were weak. Now we're also going to cut out the air valence and remove this old filler here. So the plan to remove the trunk floor is to drill the spot welds out and keep this part as a reference to, keep the, to know the height. And then we're going to trim this end here and leave a little bit of a step so we can align the new panel. So after removing the trunk, I noticed that this uh, reinforcing brace is quite corroded. So from the front all the way to this area here, there's a lot of pitting. The rest looks okay. We can actually purchase this part, but I'd rather fix it as uh, we have a panel that we can use to replace this. Earlier on in the project, we had to cut off the, uh, the excess of the floor pans. We kept the piece that was trimmed off and luckily enough it has a recess that matches the part we want to make. So I made the cardboard template, locating the, where the recess is and then we're just going to add some material to make a new panel from it. Like this we will save me having to press the recess from the beginning.
here we're trying to get the new floor area. Um, I think the floor is for a later model, so the corners there don't match exactly, so we're going to fix that and match the radius to the original wheel arches. The other side is a little bit less uh, off. We also cut away the rear bearings. It was basically made of filler and chicken wire, so I was waiting to get rid of this. We're preparing the trunk floor to build it in place. However, it's easier to, fit, to repair this inner fender well. This is how I bought the car, so there was nothing to take reference of. Um, but luckily enough, I could take a template of a, a finished car. So this might look like a dirty piece of cardboard, but it will actually be very useful. It's the pattern I took of a, a restored Alpha GT. And I just traced the black line over the inner wheel arch. So now we're just going to trim the paper to size and uh, put, it, uh, put it in place on our car. After that, we will, we will trace it on a, to a sheet of steel. It's time to try the rear valence in place and we're trying to find the reference to see how high it has to be in relation to the trunk floor which is this part here so what we did is it's important to keep old parts as uh, you can take measurements and see where the new parts have to go so what we did was we measured this distance here which is 17 centimeters took 17 centimeters from the end to the top and marked the line and then we would just transfer this line to make sure the trunk floor is parallel all the way out, all the way through. It happens to be that this axle plate has the same distance, so this provides a straight line all the way through. So an important reference and one of the only places we have at the back is this plate here. So what we did is we screwed it to the, to the new floor and this would give us the, uh, the height of the original uh, trunk floor. We also marked on the inside with the panel was out to give us an indication of high, high, how high the valence should be. At this point we're trying to mark where to cut the new valence. We want to keep more of the uh, original body, so we're going to cut off the piece that overlaps here. So to do this we just clearance the corners roughly, um, so this, the panel can fit better. Uh, with, the, with the swage it was fitting uh, too high out. The next found the center line of the body and the center line of the panel. Mark them and put a self-tapping screw for, tem for a temporary hold. And we put another clamp and then we measured from the inside of the headlamp of the taillight to the bumper hole. We did the same on the other side and now we're good to go and we're going to mark the, um, the cut line on the inside. That really enjoys holding and repurposing stuff. This time it came out really handy as we use this uh, television stand um, to make the bumper brackets. We're using this one because it has a bend already in place and the thickness is exactly the same thickness as the bumper brackets. Uh, the stock sheet I have is thinner than this so this, this is really useful. So 
one of the challenges we had is to center the, um, the, the bumper bracket with the hole on the panel. So what we did is we just manufactured this little tool. So we took a lock nut, turned it upside down and flattened the top. The ring on top will, uh, is exactly the right size of the hole and the bolt will keep the, will keep the bracket exactly centered. Here we're seeing the bracket from the back side and we just have to make sure that the top is aligned with the, with the trunk floor. So when, after we mark the positions, we're gonna add some spot welds when it's time to put the floor in uh, uh, permanently. When doing this job, it's important to remember that the trunk floor won't go in with the rear uh, quarter panels in place. So that's why we put the back the rear valence first and left the quarter panels out. Um, this way it's easy to get the trunk floor in and then we can align the quarter panels to this edge here. So here we're trying the bumper in place after we made the brackets and screw them into the valence. You can see the gap is quite good. We also checked for the height to see that it's uh, level. Now we started marking uh, where to drill the holes for the new spare wheel well. Uh, what we did is we measured the old one, which is this one. Here we can see the spot wells, which are quite clear after we ground the paint. And they are three centimeters apart. So what we did is we copied the radius of the opening, traced it onto this piece of cardboard and just equally spaced the holes three centimeters. This saved us time, so we could just mark and go around uh, the, the opening. Now that we tried everything, um, we can start welding in place. However, we have to follow a sequence. If we don't follow the right sequence, we won't be able to reach all the parts that we need. So first we will start by welding the floor to the rear valence. We will remove these temporarily, both the spare wheel well and the fuel tank. So then we can reach other parts. So I hope you enjoyed the series so far. Um, if you like what you're seeing, please like the video and uh, subscribe to the channel not to miss an update.